flooding is happening and Kenyans are losing their lives, are losing uh, their source of uh, food, their source of livelihood. Painful pictures right there. And earlier we also had a conversation or a story that was done with regard to energy and that is very soon you shall be forced to dig deeper into your pocket to be able to afford um, fuel, to be able to drive your car. And it is on that basis that we go straight to our interview today. And in studio with me, I have Patricia and Jareen Bogo on my extreme left, International Coordinator Access Coalition. I have Dr. Sarah Wikes, Senior Research Associate in Energy Planning. And I also have Florence Ndeti from Caritas in Kitui. Ladies, welcome on set. And I'll start with you, Dr. straight ahead. Now, when we talk about energy transition, uh, green energy, there is the issue to do with planning. Now, as Africa, we had, we recently had the Africa Climate Summit that took place in Nairobi that brought together African, African countries to have a common goal. But even as you talk about transition, we've just seen uh, fuel prices are hitting the roof. Mm. How should we go about it? So I think what you saw with those two stories was why we urgently need a transition to more sustainable, renewable energy. So both to tackle climate change impacts, which as you know in Kenya, you know, we're having very extreme severe impacts now regularly. Um, and as you said, that means people are losing their lives, their livelihoods, etc. So, so we need to move to those cleaner, more renewable energy sources to tackle climate change. Um, we, if people have those kind of um, energy systems like solar home systems, they can also, that can build them, their resilience to, because obviously any grid systems can also be affected by, by climate change. And then also you saw, uh, you know, it, the price of fuel. So imported fossil fuels, you know, you said first, you know, in, in terms of the, the, the that terrible conflict that there is in the, at the moment, you know, um, in Israel or the, uh, with Israel and Hamas, basically, um, you know, people to be more secure against the rising costs of imported fuel, actually moving to renewable energy systems and domestic production of energy, which, you know, Kenya has actually done you know, has, is very lucky in that respect. Kenya has great renewable energy sources. A lot of Kenya's generation is clean generation. Mm -hmm. Then obviously, but you know, transport is something moving to sustainable transport systems, more public transport systems, you know, that's absolutely vital for, you know, not, ju not just for climate change, but basically for poverty reduction to, so that people can afford to travel around basically. Um, and I just wanted to take a step back. Um, I mean, our work is, is about trying to, you know, the, the sustainable de development goals, we all know there's a sustainable development goal around everybody having access to, to energy. Um, basically, we are not making, um, we've made, Kenya has made great strides, for example. Kenya has a target of universal access to electricity. Kenya has made great strides, but there's still around a quarter of the population mm -hmm. that is not connected to electricity. And when you look at um, the goal of universal access to clean cooking, by that we mean not cooking with three stone fires, with, 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 with firewood or charcoal, and all the health impacts, for example, that that has. You know, 80% of Kenya's population still cook with with tradition, those kind of traditional methods. So there's a huge way to go for that clean cooking target in countries like Kenya. And globally, sorry to I'm just <laughs> say this, globally we are, we've made quite a lot of progress with electricity access. Clean cooking has been stagnating for a long time. So, and even with electricity access, people are being pushed further into poverty. Um, before we had, obviously, the, the Israeli Hamas situation, we had Ukraine, we had COVID, which has pushed people further into poverty, including meaning that people say who are connected to electricity, they can no longer afford that electricity. So we need to have different ways to move things forward more quickly to reach those goals and different types of planning is, is one way to do that and I'll, mm. I think and I'll come, come to you out. Florence she's talking about um, how to have clean sustainable energy for people at the grassroots you, you deal with such kind of demographics every single day and what would always come is the cost of uh, renewable energy renewable clean cooking energy at the grassroots what conversations are you having with them to have it easy for them to make that transition Thank you for that question. I'll respond to you in line with our experience supporting the county government of Kitui a few years ago to develop the county energy master plan. 
one of the principles that we have in our constitution is a principle of participation and uh, it also emphasizes on the need to listen to the people local people know the, what they want it is only it only requires the experts to tap into what they know their knowledge and their experience in relation to renewable energy sharing the experience that we had we uh, adopted uh, an approach called energy deliverable model which is actually a basic bottom-up where we did a lot of uh, consultation with the communities of course in all sectors bringing across all the 10 ministries because energy is an enabler to development mm -hmm. and in that sense it means if you're in trade you need to plan energy if you're in health you need to plan energy so we looked at that intensely and tried to look at every ministry what are your uh, energy needs and of course aligned to renewable energy and then uh, from there we went to the communities and interestingly what is my need in terms of energy could be different from a person we are in the same household for example if you go to a particular school you ask the various stakeholders in relation to their energy needs a teacher will tell you we need energy for power for our phones while for the students or the pupils, it's about the light so that they can have extended time to read. It's different from the cook in the same institution who would wish to have electricity to cook. So for us, we've learned it is very important to use the bottom up so that we can get the needs of the people and again, get priorities right so that we are able to influence budgeting because the current form of governance in devolution is finance follows function if it is not bad planned for it cannot get a budget so if we plan with the people's needs and priorities with us it is most likely that we will get to solve the needs of the people in terms of renewable energy provision mm -hmm. again one other gap that we realized is uh, when it comes to budgeting we would wish to have a level where we have adequate financing for renewable energy especially at county level but we have competing needs so priorities have to be right and it is from our learning it's a function of all the ministries to understand the nexus that is needed when planning for energy and each ministry plans for it that there is an important call unit that needs to coordinate to make sure that what is planned in the ministries is actually implemented mm -hmm. and all stakeholders are involved. Mm -hmm. Again, referencing the issue of energy need. If you go to a household, the energy need for a mother could be different from the energy need of the, the father. And it'll come to you now. Here is the question of um, energy needs being different but then here is access to that energy that's where you come in mm -hmm. now um as we have this discussion now issue would be um a mother would need energy for a different thing a father and a, a child in that house but how do we access this energy such that every single person in a house has access to this energy in a way that is affordable that is clean because we are having this show here because we, we realize that fossil fuels have destroyed the environment we're in therefore how are we making that transition to access clean renewable but affordable energy yeah when you're looking at the household and thank you for the question we have to look about the cost element and the sustainability of it when you look at the households, and especially in Africa, majority of uh, the Kenya, the statistics are showing that over 673 households mm -hmm. are still lacking electricity. We have 2.3 uh, billion households still lacking clean cooking. And you also have marginalized communities that are not in the grid uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we have to look into the entire spectrum in terms of uh, where are these households uh, m located and ensure that we define pathway in terms of access to energy access. When it comes to sustainability and as you're saying, everybody needs energy for their, to meet their house, uh, to meet their needs. Be it the woman, she needs the household um, energy for cooking, lighting, uh, lighting up the home. Maybe the man needs the energy maybe for powering um, equipment within the farm, His probably tools. it's agriculture, the tools <laughs> and all that. And even the children, they need uh, light for education, they need to access information even uh, through the internet. Mm -hmm. So when you look in terms of the entire spectrum, we have to ensure that we define pathways that are 
that are sustainable and we are looking in terms of the infrastructure on the finance the financing part of it so for us as especially at access coalition we engage with different stakeholders within uh, the energy space we look in terms of uh, the financiers in this space be it the multilateral development banks we look in terms of the infrastructure and how their strategies are able to welcome renewables uh, Currently, we have been targeting the African Development Bank, the World Bank, and also we have had some other engagements also with the IMF and even other financial uh, institutions, trying to see how much uh, are they cascading down to the populations, within, especially the developing countries. We have to ensure that we define pathways whereby there is accountability, there's an equitable way of uh, distributing the resources and ensuring especially the vulnerable and the marginalized communities are also able to access the energy that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. The renewables, especially for Kenya, on the area of electricity, we are doing well. But we realize, despite that uh, infrastructure well laid out, we still have households that cannot be able to cook with uh, electricity. Mm -hmm. We have those emerging issues that are also coming up. We also have other alternative fuels that we could also consider. We have the LPG uh, that has been uh, defined as a transitional fuel. And we are trying to build the developing countries to be able to get out of the narrative of the fossil fuels and be able to use other cleaner options. Mm -hmm. So we have to ensure that the governments of the different uh, nations, they have to ensure they put up systems where to define pathways that ensure that we are going to the renewables mm -hmm. that are more sustainable, reliable, and also they are affordable at the household level. Mm -hmm. So we have to ensure that the households, they are also able to meet other needs because uh, there are other competing priorities within a household. Mm -hmm. And if that one is not addressed, we have seen people um, getting back to their old uh, rudimentary kind of technologies. If they, the fuels, and we have seen also in the news that when it goes higher, they have to look for alternatives. They mm -hmm. may either get back to their old uh, fuels that they have been using, but if we ensure that uh, they are affordable, then there's that path that is already generated. Mm -hmm. And let me come to you, Sarah. Um, she is talking in terms of making sure that uh, households get the energy that they need in a more affordable mm -hmm. way and that they are green. But all these demands planning, mm -hmm. and this is planning from a global perspective, mm -hmm. cascading down to countries to different governments to counties and all the way to where now sarah would be talking to mm. the common person mm. on the need of getting into this mm. now in terms of kenya making sure that this is happening or countries out there are they giving these a priority because someone would say it's all about making profits and making money mm. but we are making profits at the expense of households so i would say um you know, resources, every, resources are limited for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. National government, mm -hmm. county governments. And I think you have an opportunity in Kenya now because under the Energy Act 2019, county governments have to do energy plans now. So our planning approach that um, we developed, um, you know, with uh, Loughborough and then and with an organization called IIAD in the UK is saying, let's look at energy as an enabler of these different development needs. Let's ask people, let's really find out what people in a particular context, say county, like Katua County or Maru County, where we've, we've um, worked recently. Let's, let's try and identify what are those, those de development needs, but then prioritize and working with those people on the ground, county government, etc., to priorities, because you can't do everything, okay, and you don't have the resource for everything. So let's plan a county energy plan in a way that defines what are those key development needs, what's the role of energy services in delivering those. So, for example, if the need is a far farmers want to increase their income from, from growing a particular crop, they may need, have a need to access irrigation and power for irrigation, but there may be a lot of other things that are not to do with energy, access to markets, um, you know, input, cost of inputs. I mean, that's a huge issue for farmers at the moment. Um, access to training. So our approach is, yes, you want to think about delivering the energy to power irrigation, but you need to think about all those other things as well. And if you don't do those other non-energy things you won't deliver just giving people power for irrigation will not give that impact of increasing the farmer's income so we're trying to design these holistic solutions and as both um, Patricia and Florence have said you need to build the buy-in of people and and the government county governments and if you do that proper uh, a process where you go to the ground and you really try to get people to understand 
you want to try to understand their needs, but also them to understand that you have to prioritise and you can't do everything. That builds the ownership and the buy-in. So what we're saying is great opportunity in Kenya now mm -hmm. with the county energy plans. Let's make sure they're aligned with the county development planning. That's where the money's coming in and the budgeting. Mm -hmm. And let's also look at what donors can do and others. So build it. It's got, you've got to make those, those solutions that you're designing financially viable as well as environmentally and socially okay so you need a good business model right and that might involve you might not be able to to, to give that irrigation to to, to every farmer mm -hmm. you need to target which farmers it may be that the farmers have to put in some money themselves right you may have to organize access to finance for them so you need to really work out in detail your business model mm -hmm. is that going to work and if county governments can get behind that and allocate resource then they can also go to other like donors, etc., and say, look, we've really done our work homework here. We've got these business models. We know we want to increase income from our farmers from growing these cash crops. We've got it. We've got worked out, you know, the costs and the benefits. You know, can you come in and help us on this training or whatever? So that's that's the opportunity in Kenya. If I think now with these more bottom-up county energy planning. And I'll be coming to you, Florence, uh, after this break, to just so that you can give me a, a, a feedback on in terms of with all these planning models that do exist. How are you tapping into that as a county so that that same information can go to the farmers who can access that information, organize themselves so that they can not only get access to clean energy, but funding that will help them get there. But let's take this short commercial break. We'll be back with much more.